Lunar free returns are a class of Earth-Moon trajectories that allow a spacecraft to conduct a lunar flyby without the expenditure of any propellant after departing Earth orbit. They're typically divided into three phases with two maneuvers, translunar injection, outbound orbit, lunar flyby, return orbit, and Earth orbital insertion or Earth re-entry. We'll get to the full visualization of this orbit in a moment, but first, it helps to visualize these orbits in a frame that rotates once a month, so the Earth and the Moon appear to be stationary with respect to each other when we view from this frame. The spacecraft begins in a parking orbit around Earth. Once it reaches a phasing angle with the Moon of about 125 degrees behind, it performs a translunar injection burn, raising its apogee to just slightly beyond lunar orbit. Five days later, the spacecraft passes behind the Moon from Earth's perspective and begins the return leg of the mission. The return path is a mirror image of the outbound trajectory and returns to Earth orbit five days after the lunar flyby, where the spacecraft can either aerobrake back into Earth orbit or re-enter the atmosphere for landing. A few important features about free return trajectories. First, we call them free because they don't require the expenditure of any propellant in order to return to Earth, but this is slightly misleading, since it implies that the spacecraft wouldn't have returned to Earth if the lunar flyby hadn't happened. And that's not true. The translunar injection burn for a free return is only about 3.1 kilometers per second, which is slightly under the 3.18 kilometers per second required to escape Earth from a 400 kilometer low Earth orbit. So even without the lunar flyby, the spacecraft would have returned to Earth anyway. We can see this by running the same orbit in a different direction, where it misses the moon entirely. The vehicle departs Earth, travels out beyond lunar orbit, and then falls back to Earth. But note the date of the return. Without the perturbation from the moon, the flight took 14 days instead of the free return's 10 days. So in a sense, the return was already free. What the lunar flyby got us was a free reduction in flight time and crew consumables. Second, this type of orbit is impossible to accurately describe with classical Keplerian orbits, but it can actually be well approximated by them. We can see the lunar free return trajectory is well approximated by two elliptical orbits. The only complicated part takes place when the spacecraft is near the moon. And even though this part looks complicated in this frame, it's actually well approximated as a hyperbolic orbit in the lunar frame. Approximating a lunar free return as two Earth-centered elliptical orbits tied together by a lunar-centered hyperbolic orbit is what we call the patched conic approximation, and it's actually a good enough approximation for most preliminary orbit design. Finally, in order to effect the correct free return, the vehicle has to fly by the moon at an altitude of three to four lunar radii, about 6,000 kilometers. So if the goal is to land on the moon, a free return trajectory won't work. A maneuver would have to be performed earlier in the flight to take the spacecraft off of a free return trajectory and onto a trajectory that'll take it closer to low lunar orbit. The only time a fully free return trajectory has been flown on a crewed mission was Apollo 8, which flew by the moon in December of 1958. Other Apollo missions flew part of a free return trajectory, but maneuvered off of it while en route in order to pass closer to the moon for lunar injection. Apollo 13 is the only one which flew off of a free return and then rejoined a lunar free return after the explosion made direct abort dangerous. 